Hello and welcome to another Raw Doctor. This one's a little different because it's hosted by me, Toby. Usually these are hosted by the fantastic Christina Bernalis. I'm going to try to be just as fantastic. And let's start off by saying that this is the show where we take your raw files that you've provided to us and we edit them teaching you some Lightroom tips and tricks and just generally showing you how to make your images look a little bit better. You can submit images for future Raw Doctor episodes at photorec.tv slash raw doctor. There's a link right down below this video to that page. Also just a reminder that we do monthly assignment critiques where we provide you with an assignment or challenge if you want to call it that. You create those. They can be raw or JPEG. We'll take either. Um, and uh, then we critique them and generally talk about and sometimes touch on them uh, or touch up them in Lightroom. The current critique for the month of May is cropping. We do not want you to crop in Lightroom or Photoshop. We want you to crop when you take the photo. And if that raises big question marks in your head, take a moment and watch the April video for more information about that. But basically, we want you to compose your image in such a way that your subject is cropped, creating a little bit more tension or uh, drama in the image. Usually, it's one of the things that you can create that way. So all of that said, let's get that stuff out of the way and jump right into the first picture that we're going to be working on today. Well, a beautiful location by Christian Karen with a nice exposure. Now, why do I say this is a nice exposure when clearly this image is underexposed? I say that it's nice because I look up here at the histogram and I see that we have all of our information intact. We have really no clipping, a tiny bit up here. That means that because this is a raw image, it gives us a lot of room to work with and we will be able to get this image a, a lot brighter and really kind of showcase what's going on here. Now, as always, you can go in different directions. So you could keep this a very dark and moody, uh, almost silhouette type image, but I don't want to do that. I want to go brighter. So the very first thing I'm going to do is start to drag my exposure. Actually, no, sorry. The very first thing I'm going to do is apply the photorec.tv base preset by clicking on it. Now, all that does is add a tiny bit of clarity and vi vibrance. It just moved those sliders and down here in lens correction, it enabled the profile correction and it automatically found that Christian used a Canon 10 to 22 lens. And so it applied a little bit of profile correction um, out of the edges there. That's it. So you could do those things on your own, but the power of Lightroom is to create these presets or buy presets from people like us uh, that allow you to do it in one click, making your work a little bit more efficient. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start to drag my exposure slider to the right just generally brightening this image. But I want to be careful watching that histogram. I don't want to hit the edge too much. So I'm going to have to stop right around there. Um, and now I'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit. This is very similar to the exposure slider, except it only works on the highlighted areas. And I'm going to come down here and do the same thing with the shadows. I'm just going to bring them to the right a little. Now this location could have been a nice spot for an HDR, not to create one of those overly dramatic HDRs, but to give yourself even more data uh, to really work with. Because even though we haven't lost anything, there is some, some areas up here that are almost pure white. So I think that looks pretty good. You know, one thing bothering me is it's a little crooked. So I'm actually, before we continue on, I'm going to straighten this. It can be tricky with wider angle lenses, oh, got it right there, uh, to really be able to tell whether or not something is straight because we have curves off at the edge, but it feels just, that was too much. It feels just a little off to me. So I'm gonna bring it up just a bit, kind of using both the horizon to judge and also these telephone poles, which I imagine that they we're fairly careful in uh, creating straight, so like that. I think that looks a little bit better. Now, um, you know what? The shadows can come up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But we don't want to lose our black point completely. We can see we have a tiny bit down here in the rock. I hit our black point uh, button. So I'm going to come down to the tone curve. So down here in the tone curve, I'm going to just grab our bottom point and drag to the right a little bit, watching my histogram. We can again turn this back on 
and looking for those areas that I want to make pure black. Why, why add contrast? Because what we're doing is basically adding contrast to this image. Why do it this way as opposed to just increasing the contrast slider? Well, the contrast slider applies it equally over the whole image, to the dark areas, to the light areas, to the middle toned areas. And by using the tone curve, you are avoiding adding contrast to the middle tones of the image, which often just can kind of make things look a little muddy. And you're really focusing on adding it just to the darker areas of the image by making sure you have a black point, and using this point up here and dragging to the left, the brighter areas of the image. And again, let's turn this on so we can see. I'll go to the right quickly so you can see those areas now are completely white with no information. We want to come back just until there's a hint of them up there. This gives our image just a little bit more tonality. That's why we're working in the tone curve um, without muddying the rest of it. And we can turn this on and off to see the differences. So you see, we've got, it's not, it's subtle, but there is nice contrast there now that doesn't affect the whole of the image. So we still are dark down here in this area and the local adjustment brush is great for that. So I'm gonna come into the local adjustment brush. A lot of these are again presets from us that are available through our videos, but some of them, just the ones, regular ones here, uh, Dodge lightens just a little bit. Um, it's just the exposure slider moved to the right a little bit. Here are my brush settings. The size looks about right. Maybe, yeah, no, I'll keep it that. The feathering, let me show you the difference. Zero feathering, there's only one circle. It has a hard edge to it. Feathering at 100, and you can see the distance between that two circles, the effect is now gradually reduced. And then the flow, of course, is how fast this effect is applied as we hold down on the brush, or hold down on the mouse in this case. And a middle flow is usually pretty good. Auto mask, we'll talk about in a second. So I'm just going to kind of paint in this area right here. And with the flow turned about half down, it's not going to be a dramatic and a fast effect. But I'm just kind of brightening this area, and I'm going to go outside of that rock zone too as well, to really kind of bring in the details of this, these pebbles under the water surface here. And if we want to see how much area we've affected, we can turn it on and see with the mask overlay. And I want to paint a little bit more there and a little here. And you say well, you miss some spots, it's okay because we've got these reflections and stuff. It's not really going to be seen if you miss a spot. Um, but you know what? I don't like that I've gone up there too far, so I'm just gonna hit the erase button and I'm just gonna erase a little bit of that and that let it fade out over there like that. Um, and turn that back off. And now I'm gonna come up here and adjust the exposure. Just bring it up a little bit more until we can really get some of the detail in the rocks there. I like that. Now, there's some nice colors, there's some nice greens over here. Uh, and an easy way, let's close this, an easy way to make those adjustments is to bring up your vibrance and your saturation a little. But one of the dangers of both of these sliders is as you start to move them to the right, and then you think, well, maybe I moved it too far and you start to move it back a little bit and immediately it looks really blah. So you really, these, these sliders can be dangerous. Very minor touches to this. I very rarely go above saturation 20 or 25. Um, and it starts to bring out a lot of colors in areas I don't really want. I'm just focused on that green. So I'm gonna bring the saturation back. I'm gonna come down here to our hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. And we have one for green right here and the saturation here. So I'm gonna focus on just bringing up the green saturation just a little bit. And again, let's turn this off and back on. Again, subtle is the key here. I think we can, it's a little too subtle. We can come up a little bit more. Another thing you can do is you can shift colors just slightly. So green is a big range from this kind of yellow green to this really uh, aqua green uh, or blue green, thinking of your Crayola colors as a kid. So we can take over some of the yellow green area and bring it just in line a little bit more green. Let's go extreme for a second and see. Mostly happening over there on the left hand side. So we're going to dial it back just a little bit. What's nice is by focusing our color shifts to more saturation, uh, we in, in certain areas, we keep the reality here. Um, and this is still a completely believable image. And people say, look at that beautiful green off in the distance. And we haven't 
brought up colors too much in the pebbles or in the sky. Colors can sometimes come out when you bring the saturation up too much. So again, let's just turn that off and back on. It's good. One other thing that I would like to do is to bring out a little bit more detail in the clouds above us. And there's a couple of different ways we can do that. I think in most cases when we're working with skies, we go to the graduated filter and we grab that and we drag down through the sky and then we can change this to our exposure slider and you can see that immediately a graduated filter applies the effects heaviest at the beginning and then to zero and the middle line is about 50% so we can drag that middle line down if we wanted to and we can also drag the size of the fade like that um, and you know what I'm probably and then there's the, the mask overlay is on there too when you hover over it for a second or two. Shows you where it's really affected. And this, you know what, this looks pretty good. We could also do it with a radial in, in this case almost because we have such a curve here. We really don't want to affect these mounts. We don't want those to be much darker. And this is where the new feature, one of the new features of Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC comes into play that's really nice, is in the masking tools we have the ability to make changes with the brush. And in this case, I want to go to the eraser brush um, and I want to erase the effect off of this area down here. See, so the, the mask ends, or the filter, the graduated filter ends, and is not down here. So I don't need to worry about that. But a little bit here it happens, and a little bit over here. With auto mask on, it's going to be looking for the edges and making sure that the area I'm painting, if there's any abrupt changes, it does not paint it outside of the area that I'm mostly painting. So I want to make sure the bulk of my brush is inside these mountains. And again, flow fairly high for erasing sounds good. Feather, I'll bring that up a little bit. And size, I think our size is pretty good. Easy keyboard shortcuts for changing your size is your left and right bracket keys. So I think somewhere around here, and I'm just gonna start down here so it clearly knows I'm in this area. And I'm just going to kind of bring out some of that, or I'm gonna remove some of that graduated filter along these mountains so that they stay nice and bright. And I'm just going to come up this right hand side and do the same up here as well. So I really don't want those to be darker. And back like so. Now if we hover over this, we can see that our graduated filter nicely is filtered down, but ends in the mountain regions. I can come back over here and a little bit. Now notice I'm going up into the sky, but it is nicely, maybe just a little bit, um, because I have auto mask turned on, not applying that effect to the sky uh, nearly as much. It's a little harsh. If I was taking the time, I'd probably go back in and do that, um, making sure you gotta really watch out for that halo. See, there's just a little bit of light color there. You wanna watch out for that. All right, I'm really happy with the direction of this guy. Let's, let's look at what we've done so far. Before, after. Before, after. Pretty nice. You can even brush on a little bit more detail up here in the clouds. Now the pole, power poles that we have going on over here. That's something that you could remove if you wanted to. Uh, they're pretty minor. The ones against the hillside are almost hidden. The lines themselves are and then off in the distance as well. This is something where Photoshop is really handy and if you bought into the Creative Cloud you have access to both programs. It's nice but Lightroom can do this as well. You've got the uh, clone slash heel tool right here. And we're gonna start with the clone and we're gonna start with the easiest one, this little pole right here. First thing I recommend is always just make it just large enough your uh, healing size to cover whatever you're about to work with. In this case, this pole. And all you need to do is click and drag down with that uh, size just right. And it's gone and grabbed an area nearby and it's done a pretty good job. And I can say done. And there it is, the pole is gone. The lines are still there, but again, if we hit the Z key to zoom out, you don't see those really very much. If I, this was an epic photo uh, that had some power lines in it, I would probably take the time. I wonder, oh, okay. Now this one's a little bit trickier. We've got a bigger size here, uh, and in this case, you could option to make a bigger size, but I think we're still better off kind of doing this uh, piece by piece. So I'm just gonna drag up through here and down and that cross beams, I don't think we're going to see. So 
we now have a nice pie symbol or a Stonehenge. And it's grabbed from down here. Not so handy. So I'm just going to grab that and drag it and move it up a little bit. And somewhere in this general vicinity seems to kind of match. You can see that right now because we just did that zoomed in. But when you zoom out, it's gone. Not completely. So you got to be careful. And this is where I might make it a little bit smaller and do each piece individually. Um, and I also, one of the problems I see most noticeable here is the fact that we've got this um, kind of edge up there where it's sticking up. So if I shift this to the right a little bit, and then I come back up here and I'm going to click right there, even though that's not the spot I want to heal because this is a new one. And I want to just drag this down into this area. And you know what? I'm going to feather that a little bit more and a little bit more because I can see that bump right there. And that's where also a heel might come in. I'm also going to decrease its size a little bit. There we go. A little happier with that. And as I said, Photoshop can do a little bit better job and these over here. You know, we also have the reflection, so you got to watch out for that. Let's just do one more. These will be easy down here because they're in this kind of fuzzy soft water already. And it's going to do a pretty good job of just removing those without having too much issue with them remaining. Even got these over here. And it did a, a quite a good job when we zoom out. And all of those poles are gone. And again, Photoshop could do a little bit better job. So, bef well, before, after. Nice shot, decent edit. All right, from the silent landscape to feel like I can feel the beat bumping through me. Is that what they say? Probably not. Um, we got this cool shot of a DJ in action in this kind of smoky club atmosphere. Seriously backlit, which really removes a lot of the contrast from the image. Uh, that can be tricky to deal with. Um, and we got some real serious vignetting down the right hand side. Uh, I think first thing I'm going to do is apply the base preset, which again just adds some um, clarity and contrast, sorry, clarity and uh, vibrance, and also creates lens correction. This was taken with a very nice Sigma 18 to 35. Uh, and even an excellent lens like that can't really handle a, a high contrast situation like this. It's just a nature of the situation. So we have very little contrast. So my favorite way of adding a little bit more contrast back into the image is to come down here into the tone curve and drag to the right a little bit. And same with the white point. Drag to the left a little bit to add just a little bit more contrast. So you can see it is subtle. We're not going to do anything amazing with this image. Uh, we're really going to make some um, just minor adjustments. Let's come back up to basic. Let's bring our blacks down a little bit more. Let's bring the shadows up so that we can get a little bit more detail down at the base of this image um, with his hand on the turntable and the mixer and the mog thing down there. Um, and, you know, that's good. Now, we have this serious vignette I mentioned. Really easy way to deal with that is to just crop in. Now, I would don't want to crop in too much because we have a fairly nice composition here and I like the room above his head. Uh, but we can take some of that out by cropping. We still have some. Now, we probably easily is, is just come into our brush or local area adjustment. And again, we want to, we could adjust our exposure or we could just dodge this a little bit. Um, and let's make sure our exposure is up a little and all of the sizes look good. And so let's just come paint down the right hand side of this image to just lessen that effect and bring up the light area there just a little bit more. And once you paint on the effect as you saw you do, then you can adjust your settings as well a little bit. Um, just kind of matching the general feel of this image. Now I also might change my, let's close this, my white balance a little bit. We're very blue here, so we can come out of the blue just a tiny bit. We don't want to do too much because we're not going to get a natural effect with this much blue to begin with. Um, but if we warm it up just a little bit, we might get not too much so that he looks sickly, 
um, we might get just a little bit more contrast again as well um, there. Pretty minor changes. Let's look at the before and the after. And one of the other options for an image like this, the, the blue is cool, uh, but we could also go, actually, you know what, before I do that, let's add a little bit more clarity because that's another way to really kind of micro contrast as a way that you could describe clarity um, to bring out a little bit more detail. Let's look again before, after. So we've definitely brought out more in this area. Another thing you can do is go to the black and white and it's chosen a mix for us automatically here. Um, and that's kind of a cool color too, or a cool look. I, th the blue really is nice, but one of the things you can do in here is really bring up your oranges. We're not seeing as much in this case, are we? Yellows and bring the blue down a little bit. And we have what seems like a more normal looking. We don't care what colors there were now. We just have this kind of more black and white, but his skin tone feels good to me, uh, or the skin brightness would be a better way to say it um, in this effect here as well. All right, let's move on from the club to a really cute little hummingbird, maybe ruby-throated female. Um, and just a nice shot. Now this is Darren's, and he actually wrote uh, to us, shared this with us, excitement. Uh, this light that we have in here and the reflection is coming from a reflector, not a flash. And so that's why we have this, this nice balance of natural light, and we don't have any of that harsh flash effect. Plus, I imagine that the hummingbirds wouldn't really care for uh, a flash going off, although people do use those, and it's okay. So let's um, bring up our exposure right away because we just some of this area. He's kind of gray, but we've got some whites in here that we want to be just a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to bring those to the right. I know I keep forgetting. Apply my base preset. One of the reasons I keep forgetting to apply the base preset is I have that preset applied on import. Again, making Lightroom work more efficiently for you. Uh, getting all of that out of the way, adding a little bit of clarity and vibrance that raw files need to look better, um, and correcting for whatever lens distortion with whatever lens I've used. It automatically detects in 90% of the cases um, and then applies those changes for me. So on import. So uh, that helped a little bit. And then where our exposure has come up a little, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring up the shadows just a little bit more as well add a little bit more clarity and a little bit more vibrance. Vibrance is less dangerous than saturation. Saturation is the one where very quickly things can get too colorful. You can see in here it's just a little bit too much and the little feeder here is a little too much as well. So I'm going to dial that back down. If you wanted to, this is another place where a local area adjustment brush with your saturation, you could paint on in a kind of localized area to really bring out that color in that area uh, with it, without affecting the rest of the image. So just painting just a little bit back here. Again, 35 might be a little too much, but otherwise that looks, that looks quite nice. We've got something creeping in, part of the part of the feeder up here on the right hand side. We could crop a little bit. I, don't want, I want to make sure there's enough room up here, um, and I still think that there is. So I think that looks a little bit better. Another thing is this, this brightness here is a little distracting, but I don't think it's worth working on. If you wanted to, you could do the same thing we did for the club scene and just darken that area through there as well. Overall, I think this is a great image, and we've got some really nice detail in there in the eyes. It's quite amazing. We could come down here to our uh, detail section, and we could, we've got our sharpening, we could increase our noise reduction just a little bit, um, and just clean up some of that when we get in a little bit closer. Not quite as noisy. Beautiful, amazing creatures, wonderful picture. And I think, oh, we didn't do a before and after of this, did we? Let's do a quick before and after. Again, no amazing drastic changes, but just really just tweaking that exposure, bringing up the brightness, um, I think makes this image pop just a little bit more. And that's it. This Raw Doctor is 
done. If you'd like to submit an image for a future Raw Doctor, remember photorec.tv slash Raw Doctor. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for those who submitted and allowed us to work on their images. Have a good day.